Hi, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Today I'd like to show you how to make a really easy and super nourishing beef soup recipe that is perfect for the GAPS diet. So when you're making this beef soup, you're gonna have a complete meal. You're gonna have lots of really gelatin-rich meat stock. You're gonna have meat, vegetables, and then you can add some probiotic food to it and have your complete meal. So let's jump right in and get started. First thing I'm, that I'm going to be doing is just adding the first set of ingredients to my pot. This is a, such an easy recipe. It's something that you can start earlier in the day and then have ready to go when it's dinner time. So it's really just set it and forget it. It makes life very easy. So I have here some different meaty beef bones. So I have some beef shank. These are one of my favorite meaty beef bones for cooking, making meat stock. And then I also have some other just beef soup bones that happen to have a lot of meat on them too. So I'll just do a combination of a bunch of those. And I'm just gonna open the packages and start putting them into my cast iron Dutch oven that I have here, I have a big one. I'm making quite a bit at a time, so we'll hopefully get a couple meals out of this. That's one of my favorite tips for cooking on the gap diet too, is making, you know, big quantities of something at a time, so that way you have to prepare it less often. This makes everything easy. So you can use whatever big pot that you have, like a stock pot or a soup pot, whatever's big enough to hold the amount that you want to make. You can also do this same recipe in a crock pot. It will just take longer. You have to take into account the time it'll take for it to heat up and come to temperature. And then another important thing to remember is that the correct ratio of meaty bones to water in order to get the perfect meat stock that gels nicely is one quart of water per pound of meaty bones. Now I probably have more bones than water, but that just means I'm gonna get a more concentrated meat stock and that's perfectly okay. The thing that you wanna guard against is just having it too watery where it won't gel. So once I have my meaty bones into my Dutch oven, I'm just gonna add a few other things. I'm going to add an onion that I just cut up somewhat coarsely, but in small enough pieces that you can eat it easily. Remember, a meat stock soup type of a meal is different than like bone broth where you're planning on tossing whatever vegetables that you add. You're gonna plan on eating all of these since it's a shorter cook time. And then I'm just gonna add the onion to my pot here. Next I'm gonna add some peppercorns and I have this trick that I like to use where I use a tea strainer to put the peppercorns into the pot. That way you don't have to worry about eating around peppercorns later on. So I just have two of them for this amount of soup. And then I'm going to add some mineral salt. I just always add salt to taste. Um, less is better than too much. You can always add more. If you need a little bit of guidelines for an amount of salt, about half a teaspoon per quart of water is usually a good place to start and then you can definitely add more later. And then last of all, um, just some filtered water that we filter through our Berkey water filter. And when I throw a soup, meat stock type of thing together like this, when I know I'm using plenty of bones, I just fill it as full as I can with filtered water to try to cover everything. Okay, so then once I've gotten the bones, the onion, salt, and peppercorns, and filtered water in there, I'm going to put a lid on this and then stick it into a 300 Fahrenheit degree oven. And the total cook time for this, I usually like to be six hours. So once it has gone for about five hours, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and then add the vegetables so that way they're not too overcooked. So I'm just gonna go stick this in the oven. Okay, so now that our beef soup has cooked in the oven for a while, 
It's about an hour before I plan to eat, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the vegetables. So I have chopped carrots that I'm adding. And then also some peas. Just going to try to move this around a little bit so that they can get submerged. Some other vegetables that are really great choices for this soup are leeks and turnips. Carrots, peas, leeks, and turnips are all vegetables that you can do on the very beginning stages of the CAPS introduction diet. You can also do cut up chunks of pumpkin. That's um, another thing that you can do on the introduction diet. And then if you're on the full GAPS diet, then cut up chunks of winter squash can be good. You could do other vegetables too, like broccoli, cauliflower, summer squash. So now that we have those added, I'm just gonna go put the lid back on and stick this back into the oven and let it bake for about another hour. After it's baked for another hour and the vegetables are really nice and soft, then it should be ready to go. At this point, the meat should be really tender, the meat stock should be done, and it should be delicious. So let's go ahead and dish some up. I like to use more of a slotted spoon at first to try to get out the meat and whatever vegetables I want and then add meat stock on top of it with a ladle. I find that these types of meaty beef bones come with a lot of their own fat. And so for this particular meal, I don't often add additional fat. If you feel like you need it, definitely go ahead and add ghee or some more tallow or whatever your body is doing well with and you need. Um, you also wanna let this cool a bit before you add your probiotic food. So I think we'll be doing sauerkraut with this for dinner tonight. So I'll, I'll let it cool so that it's not super, super hot to try to preserve that probiotic bacteria in the sauerkraut and then just put some sauerkraut in the bowl along the side and it's ready to go. So that's a really delicious GAPS introduction or full GAPS beef soup. You have your vegetables and your meat and your meat stock, probiotic food, healthy fat, everything all in one dish. Super easy to put together too. Be sure and check out the other GAPS diet videos that I have on my channel. I'll link some of those below. Also be sure and leave me a comment and let me know what videos you'd like to see, what recipe videos or anything. Also in the description box, I'll have a link to one of my favorite places to buy organic groceries. There'll also be a link to my blog post with the the full written recipe and a printable recipe card if you'd like to grab that. I also have a brand new free ebook. It is a GAPS diet getting started guide. So I'll have a link below to that where you can grab it. It's a whole bunch of really helpful information that you'll wanna make sure that you know before you start the GAPS diet and to just help you as you're starting. Also, I have another new thing that I've just come out with. If you haven't heard about it already, it's a 30 day GAPS meal plan for the introduction diet and it also includes some videos that walk you through going through those stages of the introduction diet. There'll be a link below too where you can check that out. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think needs an idea for a really delicious meal, whether on, they're on the GAPS diet or not. Here on my channel, I show you how to make nourishing recipes for nutrient dense food, natural remedies, and DIY skincare and home products. So if those are something that you're interested in and you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.